opinions expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Welcome to the Karmic Path with your hosts, Tina Irwin and Laura Van Tyne. Join us as we dive into the normal and the paranormal to break through the darkness and to help you realize how karma, spiritual law, and psychic ability all combine to open the doors of understanding. This is the place where we build the karmic connections between science, psychology, and spirituality. But can we change our karmic path? Can we help someone else's karma? Stay tuned and join us for an opportunity to look at life and spirituality from a down-to-earth, no-nonsense, practical perspective. The Karmic Path Radio Show with Laura and Tina, Better Karma for Better Living, starts now. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. As we say at the beginning of every show, our passion is karma. I know I said it right. Get it right right this time. Everyone has a karmic path, whether we're aware of it or not, and that we don't live in a bubble. And every action and reaction, they echo out and they collide within each other. And our thought to you is to look at life in a different way so perhaps you can enhance your karmic path. And I'm, I'm a little distracted because my kid's asking me homework questions. Does she not know what I'm doing? <laughs> Anyways, um, we got a really cool email this week, Tina, from a woman named Lily in Pasadena. She wrote in and she said, hey, it was so cool to say, Alexa, play the karmic path. And then there you were. So I thought that was kind of fun. It's so, actually a little scary. I wonder if Alexa's <laughs> chuckling in the background. Right? Hopefully not. <laughs> Anyways, thank you, Lily, for writing in and letting us know that. Um, before we start, though, producer Kat, who wants to come in and say something, she she had a little something she wanted to mention here. Kat, are you there? Take it away. I'm here. So uh, the other week, I got this wonderful surprise after one of my shows. And I walk out. You did. And you did. This. <laughs> I said, Kat, there's something for you. It's like, well, that's unexpected. So it's this brown box, and I open it, and it's this whole, it's this whole experience of opening these flowers because I start to smell them. I'm like, oh, what's going on here? I've never seen flowers come in a cardboard box, especially flowers that are going to look like that. And I unwrap this uh, nice, waxy, kind of wonderfully textured brown paper, and uh, there was this ribbon and this lovely burlap covering them. And then the flowers themselves were all tw- tightly coiled together, and but none of them crushed. They were all just perfectly like little eggs in, in straw, just nice and a wonderful springtime gift. And as the days progressed, the the bouquet itself opened up more and more and spread apart and I saw new flowers <laughs> be blooming oh, that's cool. over time and it's just it's the gift that keeps on giving and they're in my window at home right now and they're still blooming <laughs> oh wow that's Incredible. cool Tina actually found this company it's a little boutique flower company and they're they called farm girl flowers yep. and it's just a really cool mom and pop flower company that delivers everywhere and when Tina saw them, she's like, we got to order these for producer cat because producer cat keeps saving our, you know, what? <laughs> <laughs> so we're glad you like them cat. Thank you for chiming in and sharing those photos, by the way, I'm watching them here on Facebook live. So you can see them later. Okay. <laughs> thank you, cat. Thank, thank you for the thank you. And thank you for all that you do for us to make us look as fabulous as you possibly can, which sometimes is a challenge. It is a challenge. <laughs> All right. So this week we're talking about controlling personal, personal, controlling personalities, personalities, those relationships, those difficult people. And we want to start with the fact that we spend more time outside of a mortal body than in one. Think about this. So we've got these difficult personalities in our life and it's a finite time and our soul lives outside of mortal time. That's kind of a heavy concept. Our soul is being housed in this physical body. We, we, these are like I've said before, these bodies are like rental units, right? And I'm definitely renting a taller body next time. Are you? (laughs) Do those cost more? (laughs) I don't know. Okay. So as 
we're in this mortal body. This is our time for these experiences to learn and deal with relationships. So meaning that we have many lifetimes where we have the opportunity to learn, fine tune, and even stop certain toxic relationships. And I want you to give a story that you were talking about this morning, actually. I, I, I think one of the important things is as you go through your life, you can look back and reflect. We're, we're so busy looking at our phone, sometimes we forget to, to take a step backwards and, and look at the things that have happened in, in our lives. And I, I was talking to my husband about uh, where he is at this point in his life. He's a grandfather and, and he is beloved by his children and his grandchildren, and this is such a stark contrast to his parents. His mother was profoundly controlling as a, as a personality. And if you didn't do it her way, oh, my heavens, you had hell to pay on every conceivable level. And your opinion didn't really matter. Your emotions, your feelings really had no place. And the feeling of wanting to escape for for him for my husband and his sister was so profound that it echoed throughout their lives and and when you have a situation like that hopefully you can marry someone who can help you navigate around it except that you know i was affected by her too and she, this is the personality who's so controlling. Well, and that's that karmic ripple effect we're talking about, right? So it is husband, the karmic ripple. These are your husband's experiences growing up. Now you're with, you guys are together and those, that's an echo effect. Exactly. And I remember as long as I live, I was awakened at three in the morning after we had announced our engagement and we were visiting and um, I'm awakened at three and I have to come down and I'm, I'm summoned before her. I'm thinking this is cool. <laughs> okay. Is cool. First of all, that cracks me up. That thought of you being summoned anywhere because <laughs> go ahead. Well, even at 22, I've seen her angry. Before. <laughs> She's my mother-in-law says, I don't know what she was thinking, but she was so used to having absolute control. She says, I have decided that you and Troy cannot get married until I can learn to like you. And I says, well, I don't give a damn if you ever like me. That could take me six months or 6,000 years. Look at this face. I don't care. And if you're going to wake me up at three o'clock in the morning and then hit me with an ultimatum that puts you squarely in charge. I, I think she really had no idea that my reaction would be, uh, you know, she hit, she did an action and I had a really, really opposite reaction than what she thought was going to happen. She thought I would say, OK, you know, what can I do to get you to like me? And it's like, I don't care if you're like me because I'm not going to give you control over me ever. Not well, gonna let the that beauty happen. of this whole thing is that <laughs> you are probably you're still her favorite daughter-in-law because you're yes. her only daughter-in-law. <laughs> And she had never had anyone, I don't think in her entire life, stand up to her. Even her parents had a hard time because her personality was so profoundly controlling. And because her personality and her energy was so toxic, we didn't allow her near our children for 14 years. I know that sounds... That's one heck of a timeout. It was a major timeout because the cruel things that she could say were... I saw the damage that it could do to a person and just in my husband and my sister-in-law. And they're, they're two really, really good people. And as time went on, we were able to identify how his mother would have reacted and how we were going to choose to react. And that's a really great karmic lesson because we all have things, right? Nobody has a perfect life, but maybe that controlling parent is really a karmic opportunity. Well, I, I do believe that she was, and it was, a, it was an opportunity for him to see that somebody could stand up to her and, and really mean it. And we actually, we did try to have a, a decent relationship with her you know, for the first seven years, although eloping really did not. <laughs> I was not going to allow her to ruin my wedding. I wanted that moment that we were married to be beautiful and precious and private. I didn't want anyone to have control over how happy I was or how bitter the memory, because I saw what she did to someone else's wedding memory. And then after we had children and I saw her behavior toward 
our, our very, very small children. I said, that's it. No contact. And well, let me ask you and it question. was really awful. How, how did he feel about that? If I don't mind getting too personal here. I think he was deeply saddened at the same time. He didn't want his children to experience what he experienced, but he didn't know how to make that change. And I had no trouble figuring out how to make that change. If someone is not there for your greater good, you don't have to be around them. Just because someone said, you know, honor your father and mother. I'm sorry. They have to earn the honor. That's true. And that goes with anybody of an elevated position. You still have to earn that honor and respect. And if you're in someone's home and you're saying or doing something that's really toxic or cruel, which is what she did on every occasion, then because I had decided I was going to be the perfect (laughs) daughter-in-law. But, you know, when I joined the Navy... Um, she was a Navy wife herself. And so she thought women officers were these terrible, terrible people. And we were a new generation of women officers. Uh, we came in after the Vietnam war and we were, we were opening a lot of doors for women and, and to face what we faced during that time took a lot of courage. And she didn't see that. She only saw that I wasn't the person she'd picked out for her son. And when that person walked through the door, I knew immediately who she was. And she's a lovely person. We have a wonderful friendship to this day. But she didn't want her life controlled by my mother-in-law either. So that wasn't ever going to work out. But the beauty of this is, is that karma gives us these opportunities, right? So now, and I hate to throw your husband on the spotlight here, but I think it's just such a great and beautiful example of how karma works. He knew he wanted a different relationship with his children and he got it because he earned it. He earned it and And he he could see the things as time goes by. Karma never wastes the energy of either what's happened to you in the past or what can come in the future. And every decision that you make is going to have this echoing out. And that is absolutely the truth with children. And uh, we're about to head into a break. And I, one of the, before we go, one of the most adorable things I've seen though, is him playing with his granddaughters in that dollhouse. I mean, it's just a sweet moment. It is a truly sweet moment. You know, you guys both have such great relationships with all of your family members, but it's work. It doesn't just happen overnight. So with Mm -hmm. that note, um, we will be right back. You're listening to the Karmic Path on Transformation Talk Radio. If you get a chance, check out the oillounge.com. They are a sponsor of the show and they do some amazing work. Sign up for their newsletter because you're going to be entered into a drawing when they come in next week for some free essential oils. And so we'd let, we'll be right back after this. You're listening to the Karmic Path on Transformation Talk Radio. Did you know that all of the shows on the Transformation Radio Network are available as podcasts to stream or download? <laughs> really? Check us out. Go to TransformationRadio.fm. We have business shows, spiritual shows, energy healing shows, and pretty much everything in between. Something for everyone guaranteed to inspire, educate, and transform. We are transforming the world one listener at a time. The Truth is Funny, Shift Happens with Colette Marie Steffen is excited to welcome Karen Benton as a monthly guest host. Tune in on the third Wednesday of each month at 8 a.m. Pacific time to regain confidence and trust in your capacity to create change in your life, your health, your family, and your well-being. Karen Benton is a mother, nurse practitioner, certified body talk practitioner, Franklin Method instructor, and owner of Limitless Living LLC. For more information about Karen, visit karenbenton.com. Learn and explore fascinating and practical uses of essential oils, how to use them, and how they can enhance your everyday life. The Oil Lounge was founded by three remarkable women with fascinating stories about how essential oils changed their lives. Tina and Laura from The Karmic Path have joined forces to educate the masses in the benefits of young living essential oils. For more information, visit theoillounge.com. Have you ever wondered if there's a way to heal the deep, hidden inner issues, wounds, beliefs, and traumas? 
The journey into spiritual healing engages people in all areas of their lives to heal themselves and others. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio as Dr. Jaffe brings conversations of healing of body, mind, and spirit as he merges the excellence of traditional medicine with the beauty of spiritual healing. For more information about Dr. Jaffe, this show, and his work, visit drjaffemd.com. How would you like increased health and vitality? How would you like to avoid the onset of disease as well as slow the aging process? This is all possible through a simple, safe, and natural process. Every day we are either moving toward wellness or away from wellness. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. I'd like to be your partner in achieving optimal health. Contact me now at MaryJaneMack.com or call 425-392-0659. Visit MaryJaneMack.com. Tap into the wisdom of animals, angels, and masters with Darcy Pariso on Animal Soul Wisdom Radio. Tune in monthly as Darcy brings insights on how to better understand and deepen our relationships with animals. Working with light and pureness of ancient techniques, Darcy, healer, animal communicator, and medium, is here to guide you through this process and provide inspiration to move forward. For more information about working with Darcy, visit DarcyPariso.com. Welcome back to the Karmic Path on Transformation Talk Radio. You know, the Tibetans have a saying, and that is, your enemy is your greatest teacher. And by that, those difficult personalities are some of our best teachers, if we pay attention. Well, you know, I got a PhD from my (laughs) (laughs) mother-in-law. Well, that's good. And what we did was we, we worked really hard to learn everything that we could. As an example, when our son wanted he got a driver's license and he asked if he could have keys to the cars. And and my husband said, no. And then my son said, mom, why would dad say no? So we sat down, we had a conversation about it without being angry and we or, just reactive, said, right? or reactive. And I said, Troy, if you were his age, what would you have wanted? And he said, I would have wanted my parents to trust me. I said, this is a great kid. So he looks, he looks at our son and he says, Let's go and get some keys made. (laughs) All right. This is a great example because we can ask ourselves, what would you like, what would your life be like if you don't follow that family pattern? Because we're all programmed and we come in with a certain level of, of karma, karmic baggage, and we're in resonance with the families we're born into. So what if we don't follow that pattern? And It's hard to think about because we know what we know and we don't know what we don't know. So how do we break out of some of this programmed pattern that happens to us? And if we're focusing the beginning part on on childhood and parenting, but we're also going to be talking about other relationships because karma gives us many different forms of relationships. A wise parent is going to guide their child and not control them. There will be moments when we do have to control them. Like if they're about ready to run into the street or something, it keeps them safe. So when a parent sets boundaries and is are wise, it keeps the child safe and it keeps them calm and it keeps them feeling secure. I remember when one of my kids was younger, I think she was about seven or eight. Our neighbor girl was over and um, this particular daughter um, likes to please people, which it's a great trait to have, but, a people pleaser, their karmic lessons can be to learn how to set boundaries so they're not being taken advantage of or they don't do something that they would rather not. So we were, the neighbors were over and we're great friends with our neighbors even to this day. And my daughter and the one neighbor girl that was her age are playing in, in my daughter's room and it got really quiet for a while. And it's like, huh. When kids are quiet for a while, you got to be really nervous. (laughs) So, I walk in the room and I notice that um, my neighbor girl didn't have bangs because she decided to chop them off like a day or two before. And I'm looking at them and my daughter now doesn't have bangs. And I'm looking at them like, what happened? And my daughter burst into tears and says, you know, so-and-so wanted to be twins and I didn't want to hurt her feelings and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, Okay, so you have no bangs. Um, Deal with it. 
Um, if you want to actually save your money up and buy some headbands, great, whatever. Not my problem, kid. And her, the neighbors, the parents of the neighbor girl were just horrified because their daughter kind of, you know, pushed this on her. And I'm like, look, you know, neighbors who are great friends of ours. She gave my daughter one of the best lessons of her life. My daughter couldn't say no. And now she has to suffer the consequence of not having bangs. And by the way, fashion is really important to the skin. So (laughs) now she has to suffer the consequences of this, but she's, you know, eight years old. And look what she gets to learn when she's eight versus if she's in with, you know, the wrong crowd or somebody when she's 12 or 14 and somebody's offering her drugs or alcohol or alcohol or or something. So this to me, it was just a perfect opportunity. I could have gotten mad and angry and everything else. But, you know, at the end of the day, hair grows back. Hair grows back. And it was a great lesson. It it is a great lesson. And I I think that when you have a controlling personality in your life and they're really a powerful personality. And I'll, and I I keep going back to my mother-in-law because she was one of the most powerful teachers I could have had. And I do have an awareness that she's been in my life, life after life. Only in this life, I learned how to deal with her so much better. I actually found someone to help me understand her and our you know, this trio relationship, she and my husband and I, and we came to terms with how to work with her because as it was pretty bluntly pointed out to me, do you really want to come back and do this again? I don't need to be touching this. Yeah. You're just making the piece pop. (laughs) So what ended up happening was we, after 14 years of no contact and I didn't want contact with her because I didn't like who I became when I was around her. Something about her personality brought out the worst in me. That's about as honest as I can possibly be. And it's, it's the truth. But I, 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 you, there are several spiritual laws and one of them is you cannot change anyone else. You can only change yourself. Let's repeat that. You cannot change anyone else. You can only change yourself. So if you want someone around you to change, you have to find it within yourself to make a change. And Even, that causes people to respond to you differently. And that change in your reaction to somebody who is doing something offensive, how you change your reaction, because a narcissist, a controlling personality has it programmed, they know how you're going to respond. So if you change on a subtle way, it's going to throw them off balance because they no longer have that power over you. By not having contact, I didn't, there were no words that were said in anger or cruelty. And so I didn't earn the karma for saying really horrible things to her. I was able to step away from that until I could learn How do I react to this woman without a place of anger? At the same time, she needed to understand that her actions created a consequence. That had was a lesson she'd never really learned. So karmically, we were both in a position to learn. And so after that window of time, we were able to make a, a new connection. We set ground rules and she followed the ground rules and I followed the ground rules. And at the end of this, we were able to find an affection and a respect for one another. And she said I was a wonderful mother. And 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 I commented that she was a very generous person. She was financially extremely generous. And she needed to know that we were very grateful for that. And we felt that because she was such a powerful teacher, we had to find it within ourselves to change. And we did. And she did get to know her grandchildren and it made a huge difference. I really am sorry. I'm making so much noise here. And that, that just makes a huge, huge difference. And when you're, if you're a parent and when you love your child so much, you want to control to keep them safe. I think that's a really normal thing to want to do. Letting a child fail is the best gift you can give them. But you can also use leadership to inspire them as they're going through their way. And another example of that would be um, 
two of our kids were going out um, Christmas shopping one very, very rainy San Diego night in December many years ago. And as a parent, it's like, oh, my gosh, San Diego on a rainy night is a really dangerous yeah. place because people here don't really know how to drive in the rain very well. And I didn't want them to go. I wasn't having a premonition. I was just being a concerned parent. And as they got in the car, my teenage son was driving. I said to my daughter, I want you to pay attention to what a wonderful driver your brother is. He is kind, patient. He he pays attention. You're going to learn a great deal about how to drive in a dangerous weather because your brother is such a good driver. And he took a deep breath and he looked at me and he said, I know what you're doing. I said, then what am I doing? And he said, bye mom, we'll be back. (laughs) So they get back and my daughter bursts out of the car and she said, oh my gosh, people were crazy tonight. They were just crazy they pulled out in front of us and she said and you were right he's the best i learned so much about how to drive in these tough situations just by watching what a great driver he is so i gave my son my confidence not my fear i didn't control with fear i controlled with confidence and in in that kind control may be the wrong word but i It gave him confidence in himself that enabled him to exercise greater control over the situation. And let's look at, I think there are other situations that happen, not just families. We're going to be, we're talking about children in this section and we're going to talk about families and coworkers and other elements here um, when we get back. But Think about those family patterns that you have in your life and things that you want to change. So start. And by the way, Tina alluded to past lives with some of these, you know, with her mother-in-law. We again, we our souls, our souls are living outside of this mortal time frame. So we get to have the scenario played with these same characters, but in different roles until karma is satisfied that we've learned the lesson. So. Think about that during the break because there are so many relationships that we can learn to affect. And we're going to talk about family reunions after we get back. You are listening to The Karmic Path. Check out theoillounge.com. And also, The Karmic Path has an app. If you ever want to listen to us on your phone while you're driving around, check out the app. You can download The Karmic Path app. And we will be back right after this break. Buzz for life, buzzed off, feeling ignored, invisible, and wondering if this is really all there is? The years go by faster as we gain momentum. You're halfway there. Are you gathering speed or puttering out? Hit your stride for the liberating half of life. Comfortable in your skin? You can do better than that. Tune in to Discovering You Again Radio every fourth Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific as host Susan Axelrod encourages listeners to decide what they want, get inspired to action, and face challenges head on. Host Susan Axelrod pulls no punches, encouraging you to grab the brass ring and soar. For more information about Susan, go to www.whatwillyourlegacybe.com. Is traditional medicine not working for you? Do you still feel as if your health isn't 100%? Here at the Holistic Medical Center, Dr. Nushin Darvish and the qualified staff look through the dimensions of wellness and start a healing plan prioritized to your needs. Our physicians assess the whole you until complete health is achieved. Get the help you need by visiting drdarvish.com or call 425-451-0404. What is holding you back from living the life you were meant to live? Why is it vital to believe in something bigger than yourself? Are you in physical or emotional pain? Tune in monthly to Vibrant Purposeful Living. Awaken the vibrant life within you with Lou Paradise and Dr. Pat on TransformationTalkRadio.com. 
Lou's passion is to help everyone experience positive solutions for life. Find out more about Lou with Vibrant Purposeful Living at louparadise.com. Tune in to The Truth is Funny with Colette Stephan each Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This hit show will have you thinking outside the box and riding the wave of infinite potential. Join Colette on the Higher Self Network, inspiring listeners to shine their brilliance and ensure success while roaring with laughter as they recognize the humor of the giant cosmic joke. Visit TheTruthIsFunny.com. Welcome back to the Karmic Path on Transformation Talk Radio. Laura, I know you have a really cool story. Well, when we're talking about changing family patterns, we think about those constant personality types that are always in your life. It could be the same. You get the same boss over and over or something like that. I had a client who came to me because she was having some massive anxiety issues and she thought maybe it was a past life thing and because that can create fears and anxiety. And as I'm talking to her, I asked her this question. I said, I could be psychic. She got <laughs> I said, what's the big event coming up in your life? And she burst into tears and she said, I have this family reunion coming up and my uncle Sal's going to be there. And he does, you know, and my parents and my sister. And she was the family's, for a lack of a better term, whipping boy. And she was the one that everybody liked to beat up, but she let them beat her up. Think about that. She's a grown woman. She's married to a great guy, which is amazing, but she let her family beat her up. She's incurring negative karma for this. Okay. Let's explain that. Let's just back up just a second. If you know that somebody's doing this to you and you continue to allow it then you earn you earn negative karma for causing them to do for allowing them to do this to you i know that sounds convoluted but yes if you put a stop to it then they're not incurring the karma for hurting you and you are actually helping your karma for stopping poor behavior from another. It's, you have more control over a situation than you might realize. So go ahead. All right. So what we did, and she realized her family reunion was the cause of all of this massive anxiety. And I said, okay, stop. We're going we're gonna to sit there and I want you to tell me what your uncle Sal is going to do or say to humiliate you. Well, he's he's done this, this, and this in the past. I said, okay, stop. So you know what your trigger points are with Uncle Sal. So when he corners you and he goats you, you could you could say many different things. Let's role play possible scenarios. Gee, Uncle Sal, I thought you loved me. Or gee, Uncle Sal, I'm sorry you think so little of me. But when you say something like this, turn around, walk away. Do not engage. You can make the comment, turn around, walk away, because when you do that, you keep your power. If you make this comment, gee, Uncle Sal, I thought you loved me. Why would you say that? And then he says something back. He's taken his power from you again. You've lost control. So you're going to just literally stop it right there at the pass. Walk away. Get your husband to help you with this. And we walked through every possible scenario with her family, each family member, and what they would do and what they would say. And she was extremely nervous going to this family reunion, even more so than normal, because she now knew what she had to do. Well, courage is action in the face of fear. And she had a lot of fear with this. Well, this is a family pattern, and I guarantee you this family pattern went on for many lifetimes. It absolutely did, and that's what happens in in all families. That's the whole point of reincarnating with certain family members. It's not all, I hate to say, unicorns and roses, and you're going to have people sometimes in families that don't get along. But when you have parental leadership, it's a lot of that can stop. But if you don't have parental leadership when you're an adult, you have power. I know we're hearing a lot of fuzz in this. Yeah, it's not I'm me. Not sure. I'm, I'm not, not sure doing anything. <laughs> I always blame her for everything that goes wrong. <laughs> when when you are having an opportunity, as this woman did, 
to change things that makes a big difference because there's another spiritual law. You cannot want something for someone that person doesn't want for themselves. Her uncle Sal didn't want to change. So she had to change how she reacted to him. And this is a grown woman. And imagine her children watching her getting beaten up by her family members. Every time they have a family reunion, they're learning how to treat other people based on what their mom doesn't do. Or they're also learning that they can get away with saying terrible things to their mother. That cannot be allowed. Or their future spouse or whomever. So how you respond to a controlling personality can set you and other family members up for uncomfortable situations or you can bring things back into balance. I didn't, I I don't want to say bring it back. You take over control. You want to bring it back into balance because karma is only about balancing. When there is tension, That means there's no balance in karma. Karma is out of balance. When there's tension, karma is out of balance. Now, suppose you have a situation where this controlling personality is going to can still still be controlling. So when we make the statement, you can't want something for someone that that person doesn't want for themselves. That's very true because parents will want their kids to do this a lot. And I, I know of a person who... His parents wanted him to become some technology expert, go into the technology field, get a high six-figure job. They offered to pay for his stuff. They filled out the paperwork for him, but he didn't want to do that. And this kept going on and on and on. He's a very bright guy and he's very mechanically inclined, but he wanted elements of freedom that a nine-to-five job couldn't give him. And, you know, he ended up becoming a truck driver and he loved what he did. We need truck drivers in this country. It's a very important skill. And so he didn't want it. He didn't want that. But his parents wanted that for him. So it was hard for him. Probably, I'm assuming, to say that I I don't want to do that. This is what I want to do. And it's taking your power back, as we've said. So let's this is two companion statements. You can't want something for someone that person doesn't want for themselves. And you cannot want something from someone that person doesn't have the capacity to give you. And so yeah. this person, you know, didn't have the capacity to be what that parent wanted. That's not a failure. It's, it, it's not right or wrong or good or bad. It's just a reality. He didn't have the capacity to sit down from nine to five and in front of a computer and drive a desk. It's not a fault. <laughs> right. It's not a fault. It's just what it's not his sole purpose or his sole mission was not to do that. He knew that and he stayed true to himself and he's done well. We have a, uh, another book, the light workers guide to everyday karma. And in chapter 26, the title of that particular chapter is the relentless pursuit of perfection, which is a great motto for Alexis, but it's really not a great way to describe a human being. Yes, if you're always trying to be perfect, you're trying to control every six situation so it comes out perfect. But there's no learning in perfection. If you're perfect, what's the point of living this mortal life? I mean, if I were perfect, I would have to do hair and makeup, right? And and but when we think about perfection, we it brings us a, a, it can instill guilt in us. Oh, I didn't do this enough, or I didn't appease that person enough. And it guilt seeks punishment, and we've talked about that in the past. And when a person wants to control you or some you know or someone around you, this is their comeback opportunity to stand up and change the way this game is played. If you view life as a game, change it step back and take the emotion out of it. And this can be hard to do. So practice detached compassion, take back that emotion, do some scenarios, role-playing in your head. So you can have a, a at the ready comment to be made when this person tries to do something that is not for your better. I, I think part of the element of dealing with a very controlling, domineering personality is fear. And when you're afraid of what that person is going to say or you fear the the wrath of fill in their name because life is going to be hell if you if you say no to them, then you have to live you have to own your own fear. And the, there's a very it's a actually a simple process 
when I say it, but it's a little bit harder to do. And the processes that you work through the scenario when you're hit, just as you were starting to describe, but you go through all the way and you look at all the reactions that person's going to have if you say no to this. And play worst case scenario in your head because <laughs> chances are worst case scenario is not that bad. Second of all, worst case scenario really takes the fear away. Because you already know what's going to happen. And if you already know what's going to happen and you know that you're still going to be okay because you're taking you're taking your own personal power back and you're not allowing that person to harm you anymore because you don't want to incur negative karma by allowing that person to harm you. And if you're passive and you just let them keep hurting you again and again and again, and I, I mean, in my own personal situation, I had no intention of letting that happen. And, you know, yeah, but there are people out. out there that don't know what to do about this. And this is what this is about is I am, you know, I'm so frustrated. I don't know what to do. And I well, go home and a, I cry. And or so. you have a boss that is so domineering and so cruel and so humiliates you and you need the job. And um, so what do you, what we're saying, and we're going to talk about this right after the break in a little bit, but that controlling personality karma is going to keep testing you with that personality type in many different facets throughout your entire life. Karma wants to know if you've gotten the lesson. So let's say you had a very domineering mother or father or boss or, okay. So you've got a domineering parent. Now you're out on your own. Now your boss is extremely domineering or your, your coworkers are out to get you. So this is that same personality type. Look for the patterns in your life. Look for the pattern and figure out what is karma trying to teach you? What is it that I have to learn? Okay, I've had a controlling parent. I've had this narcissistic boss and this narcissistic boss was worse than my dad. So what am I going to do now? Well, that's another karmic element. If you don't get it the first couple times, karma keeps upping the ante. That and it gets, cosmic two by four keeps getting bigger and bigger. It keeps getting <laughs> a more intense and difficult situation as time goes on. So learning the lesson, role playing, working it out, finding courage. Courage is, is action in the face of your biggest fear. And what you fear the most, you very frequently attract. And even if you don't intend for that to happen, I was going to be the perfect daughter-in-law, but it didn't work out that way. But I, I learned an enormous amount about how to be a mother-in-law. So with my in my in-laws now, it's a very happy and relationship. We're going to stop that thought for a moment. Okay. And you're listening to the Karmic Path on Transformation Talk Radio, and we will be right back. Okay, we're The truth is funny. Shift Happens with Colette Marie Steffen is excited to welcome Karen Benton as a monthly guest host. Tune in on the third Wednesday of each month at 8 a.m. Pacific time to regain confidence and trust in your capacity to create change in your life, your health, your family, and your well-being. Karen Benton is a mother, nurse practitioner, certified body talk practitioner, Franklin Method instructor, and owner of Limitless Living LLC. For more information about Karen, visit KarenBenton.com. Are you ready to create a life you'll really love? Then you'll want to tune in to the hit show Life Design Radio from Adversity to Awesome with Susan DiLorenzo. Live each month on TransformationTalkRadio.com. No matter where you are in your adversity story, Life Design Radio has got you covered. Get ready to feel inspired, enlightened, and motivated. For more information about working with Susan, visit SusanDiLorenzo.com. Healing has a ripple effect. One person's healing affects everyone around them. This is where the power of sharing our stories can be so important. Tune in to Playing on the Edge Radio with Megan Edge each month on Transformation Talk Radio as Megan provides you with ways of sustaining radical and powerful changes in your life. Enact the power of radical change. To find out more about Megan Edge, visit her website at meganedge.ca. 
learn and explore fascinating and practical uses of essential oils, how to use them, and how they can enhance your everyday life. The Oil Lounge was founded by three remarkable women with fascinating stories about how essential oils changed their lives. Tina and Laura from The Karmic Path have joined forces to educate the masses in the benefits of Young Living Essential Oils. For more information, visit theoillounge.com. The knowledge book currently studied in 39 countries and 15 languages around the world accelerates our evolution, takes us out of depression, offers universal truths, protects us, and makes us stronger, both spiritually and physically. So if you are interested in the knowledge book, visit usa.theknowledgebook.net and tune in to the Knowledge Book Radio with Marge Potasik on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Welcome back to the Karmic Path on Transformation Talk Radio. We're talking about controlling personalities. And I think it's important to understand that you cannot make someone love you if they've stopped loving you. And we're talking again about relationships, but relationships can have an ending. And if somebody stops loving you, there's not much you can do about it because I see on social media a lot, oh, what's a spell, love spell for this or that? It's like, eh, not a good idea. Well, when let's talk about the control people use of negatively using metaphysics and magic. You can put a hex on someone who stopped loving you or said me something mean to you, or you can put a spell on them, all of which is karmically abhorrent because you're sending an intention to an, another person that is not for that person's well, greatest good. And it's you're negative. Violating that person's free will also by trying to get them to make them to do something they don't want to do, such as love you, you're violating their free will. And that is really not, that's black magic. It is black magic. And this, we talk about the normal and the paranormal and control can also happen from a metaphysical viewpoint. And if, if you have a relationship that has an ending everything happens for a reason, if you, even if you can't understand it at the time and if you've done your very best and you're ending a relationship with as much grace and wisdom as you can, then you're, you're doing your level best to stay well, in that karmically balanced place, even though your heart is breaking. And maybe the big karmic opportunity is actually the end of the relationship. How you handle the end of a relationship, whether you quietly walk away or you say mean and horrible things, will determine really what happens in your next relationship. What goes around comes around is, is truly if, if you treat yourself as a lady or a gentleman in the process, even if the other person isn't, you take a higher road and you do what you know in your heart is the right thing without vengeance or cruelty, you can stay in a place of balance. Even when you're grieving the end of a relationship, and grief takes many forms, right? It can be an end of a relationship. It can be a death. It can be a divorce. It can be moving, a job loss. How you handle it and by stepping back, even though your heart is breaking with a little bit of detached compassion for yourself or someone else, take a step back and think about your next action. Don't give a knee-jerk reaction to something because that's not going to be for yours or their greater good. And there may be something else that that other person has to experience that doesn't involve you. That's why I, I know on social media, so many times there are people who are, you know, turning cards or reading cards, or they're looking for spell books to, to hurt another person, or they're sending prayers, which we call black prayer, which is sending negative intention and negative energy to another person. That is a form of control. And that control is black magic. I mean, let's just call it what it is. 
I know a lot of people will go to card readers and card turners or whatever, or they channel spirit and spirit says, oh, you should do this. That none of that is necessary. The goodness that lives within you is what you need. Even if your heart is sad, don't forget the good person that you truly are. You don't need those things. And we talked about those elements of being a black prayer, but, you know, Tina and I also talk about what a karmically correct prayer will look like. And it's simply this, and I'm going to say it twice. Almighty God, I pray that my friend, loved one, relative, coworker, whomever, will have the strength and courage to overcome his or her karmic challenges with grace, wisdom, and courage. Now, I'm going to say this again, but then we're going to switch the frame of reference too. Almighty God, I pray that my friend, loved one, coworker, et cetera, whoever, has the strength and courage to overcome his or her karmic challenges with grace, wisdom, and courage. This is a karmically correct prayer because you're not wanting something for someone that they can't comply with, they can't do that, they don't want. You're offering that they can overcome the situation with grace and dignity and courage, but you can also apply this to yourself. Almighty God, I pray that I have the strength and courage to overcome my karmic challenges with grace, wisdom, and courage. You know, please help me as best as you can to overcome this situation or to come out of the situation in the best manner possible. And the more you engage in karmically correct prayer, you, the more you are connected to the divine, to God. I know a lot of people don't use the, the God term. There is no healing without a connection to the divine, to the heaven world. You don't need anything else. It's, you don't it's need a achingly card. simple. You don't need a spell. Taking that time for yourself to connect to the divine will help you help yourself. And it's, it's achingly simple and it's, it's an, it's actually quite easy. And remember we come here for experiences and not all experiences are going to be wonderful. I don't think you could look at the biography of a single famous person without them having some difficult experience that changed and formed who they are. And what happened to them, which enabled them to show strength and courage and be a great person and and bring, you know, push down barriers and things like that. And maybe someone said no a whole bunch of times and a person had to find their courage well, to get them to say Rowling, yes. J.K. Rollins is a great example. I think her book was turned down over a dozen times by some big publishers. Everybody was telling her no, but she knew in her heart of hearts that this series, this book was the Harry Potter, the Harry series. Potter series was a gold mine. And I'm glad I wasn't the guy at, at those publishing companies that turned it down, but it was a small brick and mortar, tiny publishing company that first got the rights. So she had a lot of setbacks. And if you look at all of those famous people around us, they have all had setbacks. They've all had childhood traumas. They've all had these things. They're no different than we are, but if we can look at it through a karmic eye, a wise eye, it's going to make a huge difference in our karmic path. And also, if we can prove that we have overcome this difficult relationship, that we don't need those experiences anymore, that we know how to handle them, karmas might test us every now and then, but eventually that personality type will simply disappear. Will be part of your life. I did have a woman who, who asked that question. I I'm working hard to learn this lesson. Does this mean I have to come back with this really difficult husband again? And I said, it's it's not up to me to tell your future. I certainly can't do that, much less your future lives. But I can say that you've handled your divorce with an enormous amount of, of of grace. I, I that's yeah. the only word I can use. And he'll have to come back and and work this out with someone else. But my feeling is there's a high probability that you will have a different. Experience experience. And we're going to close this up with a few thoughts. And that is beware of that relentless pursuit of perfection. We're not here to be perfect. We're here to learn and to grow. And if be we patient with yourself, and if we replace the word sin with karma or experience, 
it's going to show us that, yes, we're here for these lessons. And it's a really kind of a noteworthy goal to change it that way. We wanted the relentless pursuit of wisdom and knowledge. Imagine that. You'd never mm-hmm. stop studying. You'd never stop being curious and wanting to understand. And that curiosity is a, a beautiful uh, it, it sparks something in the body. Right. And, you know, remember, if you're a jerk in life, you're, you're a jerk in death. But if you're a lovely person in life, you're a lovely person in death. And that's what people are going to remember. And you can't want for someone something for someone that they don't want for themselves or they have the capacity to give them. All right. Karma is science and action. In controlling people, is not for anyone's greater good. But if you have a controlling person, look at everything you can possibly learn from that person, right. including how not to behave well, in that way. Look at them as a spiritual tool, uh, right? Well, <laughs> or, or a great teacher. Oh, okay. <laughs> Remember, a controlling person. I just wanted to slide that in to see if you noticed. I did. <laughs> Remember, I'm trying to attack. I know, right? Can't, yeah, anyways. Anyways, thank you for joining us tonight and please check out the oil lounge.com if you get a chance. And we also want to thank our producer, Kat Greeby. And thank you for coming on air with us, Kat. It was so was much a, fun was to talk blast. to you. Yes. So you are listening to the karmic path on transformation talk radio and have a great week. Thank you for spending time with us on the karmic path radio show. Listen live every Thursday at 4 p.m. Pacific time as we explore the fascinating elements of karma and how to make those critical connections between spirituality, science, and psychology. Both of us are seasoned psychics living ordinary lives in public education and the military. Tina and I both have a deep-rooted dedication to learning how the unseen world works and to share this knowledge. Learn how to create a heightened sense of understanding and karmic awareness for greater personal balance with the karmic path. For more information, visit thekarmicpath.com.